Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Commerce Bytes November edition. Next session uh, by Varun Nehra. Uh, Varun is a solution architect uh, with Altudo, and he's going to talk about growing digital business at scale. So over to you, Varun. All right. Um, thank you, Sandeep, and uh, great, great presentation, uh, Sara. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, let me know when you can see it. Welcome to the second half of the Commerce Byte sessions uh, uh, session, and I'm I'm Varun Nera, and uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, growing digital business with enterprise marketplaces powered by um, Sitecore Experience Cloud. Um, and uh, in this session, I wanted to uh, highlight a, a few basic points, right? So how do you accelerate digital business? Um, in a traditional commerce model, uh, you have a buyer and a seller, and you can achieve uh, linear growth with that model. Uh, growing digital business at scale requires a new business model and a rapidly uh, uh, the, the capability to rapidly bring new capabilities and products to market. Um, and in that, you'll be uh, looking to partner with third-party sellers as well. Um, and uh, in the post-COVID era, um, online marketplaces will scale uh, business with new partnerships, improve customer experience, and low cost and improved efficiencies. Uh, so with that background, let me do a quick introdu introduction about myself. Um, I am uh, Varun Nair. I'm the VP of Solution Architecture at Altudo. I also head up our digital solutions group. Uh, Altuda is a platinum Sitecore implementation partner. Uh, I'm a Sitecore technology MVP, uh, more than a decade and a half of industry experience, uh, having delivered multiple end-to-end -end, uh, Sitecore deliveries, uh, talking to tons of clients and learning from them um, and, and, uh, uh, and working on some very exciting projects, uh, including a lot of uh, uh, Fortune 100 uh, companies. Um, I uh, work and live in Atlanta. Uh, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at uh, Psycho Varun. Uh, you can, uh, I mean, you can tweet me as well at Psycho Varun, and you can read my blog posts um, at psychovaroon.com. Uh, um, so um, let's look at what I'm, I'll be covering here in the next 20 minutes or so. And uh, hopefully, this is not a terribly long uh, session. It, 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 we should be able to get through this fairly quickly, but hope you will find some very exciting takeaways from the session. Um, so in the agenda, we'll kind of start with making the case for enterprise digital marketplaces, the, you know, uh, the what, the why, and the how of marketplaces. Uh, we'll look at a case study of, uh, um, of a large fintech enterprise uh, that was looking to uh, transform their digital business and how we did it through Sitecore and um, the Sitecore Experience Cloud for them. Um, and then we'll look at how in general, Sitecore Experience Cloud can put together uh, an enterprise marketplace that can accelerate your business. Um, and then we'll wrap up with a few things to consider, some do's and don'ts, some, some um, questions that you should ask yourself if you're looking to uh, build a marketplace. All right, uh, so let's just jump into it. So um, starting with making the case, the what, um, let's talk about just understanding the basics of what a marketplace is. So a quick definition. Uh, of a marketplace is that uh, it is an e-commerce uh, website, uh, digital marketplace is an e-commerce website where customers can choose from many products. Uh, but here's the kicker. These products are offered by multiple sellers. Um, so if you talk about that traditional single buyer, I mean, single seller and multiple buyer scenario, the main differentiator in a marketplace is that multiple sellers can offer multiple products to the same customer base. So what is that? business model look like? So in a traditional model, model you as an enterprise um, are the seller and you're offering your products and services to a set of um, customers. Uh, but in an online marketplace model, uh, you as an enterprise take on the role of what is known as the operator. Um, and then you invite uh, a number of sellers um, that can collectively offer complementary products uh, to your customers. Now, this is not to say that you as an enterprise um, are not a seller yourself. Um, and the, the distinction that uh, you have to make here is that there's a role that emerges that is called an operator that is different from a seller. So speaking of roles, let's talk about what this role fundamentally looks like now that uh, we're introducing this concept of an operator. So what an operator, as an operator, what you care about most is that uh, you're, you're focused on the operations, not as much the e-commerce side of uh, the marketplace. So you're focused on things like 
uh, seller onboarding, uh, managing product listings, um, ma managing rules and, and processes, fund collection, order management, fulfillment, logistics, uh, the back office systems, uh, management, financial services, reporting analysis. So a number of things, as you would see as, as an operator, uh, your focus tends to be more on the operation side of it. Um, and what that allows you to do that, uh, to then do is uh, it allows sellers to focus on e-commerce, which is purely selling. So in that case, you as a seller or your sellers are now more focused on um, things like product information, um, pricing, marketing, promotions, uh, customer service, customer acquisition, order inventory management, um, you know, pack, pick, uh, pick, pack, ship, uh, storefront management, uh, backend integration. So everything that has to do with upfront and traditional commerce now becomes the responsibility of sellers. And that then allows you to scale this business model um, for, for you as a seller or inviting other, other sellers um, to your marketplace. So some of the popular marketplaces, as you see most of these load, I think you recognize most of these logos, the most common ones we all know are Amazon and Alibaba. Uh, but uh, some of the other ones are non, not so traditional. And I'll, I'll explain things like Walmart, uh, Target, and Kroger um, are also marketplaces. So Amazon did $280 billion in sales in uh, 2019 through their you know, traditional B2C um, uh, marketplace. Uh, Alibaba, on the other hand, did 400 billion, cornering about 80% of their China sales. So we know, you know, this this model is here to stay, especially with the COVID era. You know, it's building new behaviors where we're getting more and more comfortable uh, ordering from marketplaces. However, if you look at um, uh, somebody like Kroger, uh, Kroger actually grew their digital sales by 58% in 2018 by ordering uh, by by providing um, a new portal, a B2B portal for suppliers to get onboarded and sell on their marketplace. And you can check it out at uh, the Krogerco.com. Uh, um, Walmart uh, also um, with uh, 127 million unique visitors, you would think that with Amazon in play, you know, how many people go to Walmart, but the interesting fact there is that 57% of Amazon's buyers also shop at Walmart. Um, and, you know, Walmart launched a, a, its marketplace with the ability to launch products within 24 hours of onboarding a supplier. Uh, Target uh, is another great example where they've been growing their digital sales by 25% uh, over the last five years. Um, so as you can see, marketplaces are here to, here to stay. But um, what I'm going to try to do is make a fundamental distinction between what we just saw are, are these traditional um, uh, commerce marketplaces, B2, B2C, but what I want to focus on is more of the B2B side of uh, the, the, the equation with B2B enterprise marketplaces. And let's start with, again, Amazon. So uh, Amazon um, launched its, uh, its uh, Amazon business in 2015. Uh, and it's, it's expected to take over the B2C uh, side of their business very shortly. HP, we all know, we know their products and we go to hp.com to purchase them. Uh, but you may not know about as much about their uh, HPE, which is the uh, HP Enterprise. Um, they spun off in 2015 and by 2018, 107 of the Fortune 500 um, by revenue. Uh, they're about 29 billion in 2019. So almost a hundred of these Fortune uh, 500 companies are purchasing from HPE today. Um, another one, like I said, is Walmart. Um, and, and Walmart, like I said, uh, launching their marketplace really was able to rapidly bring on suppliers uh, that can now offer uh, products in as less as 24 hours uh, from, from onboarding. Uh, Best Buy Canada was a great, uh, I wouldn't say experiment, but it's, it's, uh, it's a proven concept now, now for Best Buy. Uh, what they did was um, Best Buy Canada uh, launched the, the marketplace in which they were able to uh, increase their, their SKUs that they offered by 200% in the first year alone. And that achieved them a 30% growth in online revenue uh, by the launch of this marketplace. So lesser known, but the promise is huge when it comes to uh, B2B side of the business. Um, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more about 
uh, what these enterprise marketplaces are and um, and sort of making the case of how do you actually grow business uh, if we were to launch an enterprise marketplace. So let's look at some industry trends propelling uh, the proliferation of uh, digital marketplaces. Um, now, if you talk about growth, right, uh, this is a tr typical traditional curve uh, that shows linear versus exponential growth. Uh, and that's what we're talking about here is the exponential growth factor. Um, so the point of inflection where you take off from growing linearly to exponentially is where disruption happens. And that's where either you are the disruptor or you get disrupted. Um, so in other words, uh, you know, you, you may think my life is so predictable. I know exactly where I'm going to end up in the future, two, three years uh, in my, uh, into e-commerce. But what you don't anticipate is that disruption or that growth or, or that su uh, surprise growth factor that can propel your business. And this is where uh, marketplaces come in to, to um, drive that uh, acceleration of, of uh, growth. Again, talking about disruptions. Uh, so Amazon Business um, launched uh, somewhere in 2012 and they uh, formally announced uh, the business uh, 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 as Amazon Business in 2015. Um, and one year later, they disclosed a, uh, a revenue of $1 billion. So just within one year of launch in 2015, a billion dollars. But then it only took them three years to get from 1 billion to 10 billion. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, if you compare this with their AWS side of the business, it took them 10 years to achieve the same level of growth, which is about 10 billion in revenue versus their, B, uh, their uh, B2B marketplace. Um, and it's expected to overtake the B2C side of the business in terms of revenue. Uh, and today, 55 of the Fortune 100 companies purchase products from its business marketplace. Um, so hopefully this is starting to make more and more the case of uh, building B2B uh, marketplaces. Now, some Gartner's uh, research findings um, uh, as of early 2019, only 56% of B2B companies had an e-commerce site and only 11% had a marketplace. But here's a prediction, uh, by 2023, at least 75, 70 percent of these marketplaces uh, will serve B2B transactions. And by um, uh, again, by 2023, um, at least um, uh, most of these most of these enterprise marketplaces will have been in, in play for at least a year and will have seen at least 10 percent increase in net digital revenue. Um, uh, can't ignore the COVID factor. Uh, so before COVID, marketplaces rang up about half of the online sales, two trillion uh, uh, on the uh, top 100 sites. But with uh, digitization accelerating even further, 40% of the consumers are buying more, more online than ever before. So that's going to further uh, accelerate uh, the, the growth factor there. And almost 60% of these marketplaces are based in US and they're continuing to change the way uh, we shop. Um, so again, marketplaces are here to stay. Now, if I was a marketplace operator, you know, what are the incentives for me to jump into this, um, this business model? And obviously I'm going to start with grow, growing business, right? That's, that's straight up the first incentive for me to, um, uh, become a marketplace operator. But while I'm doing that, I'm thinking of things like activating new, uh, channels of commerce, uh, leveraging cross, um, functional assets and capabilities enriching products uh, and offerings that basically cross sell upsell. Now growing business is great, but uh, I'm also now focused on improving experiences because everything has to be frictionless and, and uh, run at scale. So enhancing partner, vendor, customer, consumer engagement and management is critical. Uh, so now you're not only talking about customer experience, but you're also talking about partners and vendors. Um, you're also looking at things like launching new products and services and offerings and capabilities. So um, always staying on top of, uh, of the market's needs. Um, and lastly, one of the critical things is to reduce cost and improve efficiency. So I'm looking at streamlining that buying process, making it very frictionless and uh, controlling my procurement and processing costs while I'm, while I'm doing that. Um, so hopefully with these incentives, we've made the case of, you know, why we want to um, uh, jump into marketplace uh, a business model. So how would I do it? Let me talk to you about a maturity model that kind of shows you step by step how you would build uh, a marketplace going from traditional commerce. So say your, your prerequisite to getting 
uh, into uh, a marketplace model is that you have a traditional e-commerce site where you offer a number of products. There's self-managed uh, listings and imagery, copy, pricing, uh, order fulfillment, most of what you um, see in traditional commerce. The next step is to add dropship. So with dropship, what you're allowing your e-commerce to do is to offer products from first and third parties. Now you have individually negotiated vendor contracts, uh, but your order fulfillment is done for both first and third party, and they're subject to terms for each individual agreement. From there, you're looking to go into a multi-vendor scenario where you're not only or offering these products and offerings, but sellers now control product listings. So you're giving away some access to, for, to sellers to be more um, autonomous. Uh, you're standardizing that seller agreement, so it's no longer one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you have more seller managed fulfillment, again, more self-service. And now you're introducing a new revenue model as to yourself as an operator, where you earn a commission for every third party sale, because you're offering these services to your uh, sellers. From there, you move into a quantitatively managed uh, uh, phase where it's all about the KPIs. So you're looking at buyer seller ratios, you're looking at platform leakage, seller performance, total offers, a number of KPIs that will help you scale this marketplace now. Um, the KPIs uh, are based on, on strategy and, and, uh, um, and allow you to build that product uh, roadmap. Uh, but you may now start to offer things like a wild, white label marketplace um, for, for business and consumers um, uh, alike. Now, finally, uh, you're, once everything is running uh, up and running at scale, you're looking to constantly optimize. Um, which is where uh, you're talking about uh, uh, new business opportunities driven uh, by these KPIs that can be uncovered from these KPIs. Um, you're streamlining and automating your seller onboarding. Um, so it's all about automation. You're offering seller services like advertising, merchandising, uh, product content optimization, supply chain management, a number of ancillary services. Um, and you're doing it across channels and across um, uh, uh, things like integrating with sellers, physical stores, like in-store pickups and returns and, and a number of such things. So hopefully that maturity model kind of tells you how you would go from say traditional um, e-commerce model to a marketplace and run it at scale and uh, with high efficiency. So with this, uh, let's talk about uh, that uh, a case study uh, where this has been done for uh, a, a large FinTech company. And their business model is basically uh, data sets. So they offer um, data insights uh, where, where uh, merchants, data consumers, financial institutions, technology partners, and third-party data providers can all come together. So their need was they needed a single data platform, which was not just a big data platform for internal analytic needs, but also a customer-focused data ecosystem. And again, this needed to be a multi-sided uh, marketplace where um, they would have a source of revenue uh, by sitting in the middle as a facilitator. Uh, it needed to be secure uh, uh, from the get-go and pay once, use many, as in pay once for the product and use it in many different ways. Uh, it had to be remote by design and with a plug and play model uh, where they can rapidly bring on new products and services to market. So in this, they came up with a feature list, right? So we helped them uh, with some of this where they wanted a uh, unified, responsive mobile marketplace to, to, to get going um, and uh, have a subscription-based e-commerce model. Now, with the B2B, you understand the org versus user level, um, uh, subscription management, account management, the metrics are different for organizations versus users. Uh, and you have reports, dashboards, um, self-service was top of mind. Um, products uh, that en en engage and encourage users to upgrade uh, to higher tiers, uh, but the whole experience needed to be uh, frictionless. So the way we kind of embarked on this in terms of feature, feature enablers are, if you look at the far left-hand side, you'll see the infrastructure that they brought to the table. And then they wanted to add a number of things like API-driven marketplace, behavioral um, series, search, segmentation, um, attribution targeting, process automation. Now you can start to see that how Sitecore would have taken up a lot of these things and brought a lot of these features uh, to the market for them and very, very rapidly. So the solution we actually built for them uh, was a React-based uh, uh, Sitecore application where um, 
Uh, we use Sitecore GSS for a headless storefront. Um, and we used, um, uh, we recommended uh, Experience Commerce for subscription management, product catalog, promotions, shopping experience. Uh, Sitecore XP was at the heart of it all. Uh, Sitecore Forms was very powerful for them for, for lead gen and, and uh, uh, a number of other things. And the whole thing was deployed uh, on AWS, um, uh, including media storage and STEMI structured data and asset management as well. Um, so Sitecore really paid, pl uh, played a, a critical role in this. So a very high level sort of reference architecture is that if you look at the far right-hand side, you have the consumers, which are the users, the partners, the operators, but they, they access the, the platform fundamentally differently. So users go to that headless um, uh, experience, uh, the marketplace experience. The partners engage and, and onboard using the APIs and also Sitecore's dashboard. Um, and we build a marketplace as a modular uh, component architecture and uh, build containers that would be deployed alongside their existing um, uh, EKS service uh, that provided these data and product APIs. So it would just be a number of uh, containers that we deployed um, in AWS uh, which was completely decoupled from the front end, uh, which was uh, React based. I know we're running uh, low on time, so I'm going to try to quickly wrap this up with how would um, an enterprise marketplace be powered by Sitecore Experience Cloud? Um, so Sitecore Experience Cloud is basically three parts, right? It's XP, XC, and, uh, and Content Hub. So uh, the features that you would act, activate in Sitecore to build a marketplace is you want to start with Sitecore Experience Commerce, uh, your product catalog, pricing, promotions, order, you name it, all your features are, are available to you for traditional commerce through Experience Commerce. For omni-channel, multi-tenant, headless storefronts, we recommended uh, SXA or, or Sitecore GSS or a combination uh, thereof. Remember the white, white labeling, if you want to uh, create white labeled uh, storefronts, SXA is a great way to do that. Um, Self-service is, is very important. So Sitecore Horizon is very powerful next-gen editing experience in Sitecore. Uh, Sitecore's Content Hub will give you that ability to manage product content and digital asset management, that end-to-end -end, um, li uh, content lifecycle management at scale. Uh, lead capture through Sitecore Forms. Acquisition uh, is very important to scale uh, the marketplace. So campaign manager, marketing automation, EXM, all of this can help you um, uh, attract uh, uh, audience uh, for your marketplace. Uh, SSO is going to be very critical because you're going to be working with a number of sellers that need to be onboarded and um, uh, switching between sellers and products and, and their own storefronts versus the marketplace has to be very seamless. So you can use identity server, Sitecore's so identity server for federated authentication. Um, and lastly, you want something that is cloud first, cloud native, uh, Sitecore's managed cloud um, really uh, helps you uh, deploy um, Sitecore at scale um, and uh, uh, using the new containers feature, um, you should be able to deploy uh, a very robust Sitecore solution on, um, on your favorite cloud. A quick reference architecture, uh, if you look at the top level, those are your feature enablers like user administration, org administration, the marketplace itself, card checkout, subscription management, product data management. Um, after that, you have the enablement layer uh, where you uh, can enable um, the, the end user experience by the HTML, JSON, JavaScript, GraphQL, OData, a number of different ways. And then you have a number of uh, Sitecore feature buckets that will enable everything that you need to power um, an enterprise marketplace. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to receive this um, uh, as part of uh, uh, the follow-up uh, uh, to this session. I know we're out of time. I'm going to pause here. Um, I was going to wrap up with a few things to consider, uh, but I uh, feel free to reach out to me or to Sandeep or to Sarab, and we'll be happy to talk more about marketplaces with you. Uh, but with this, I want to pause here and hand it back to Sandeep to do a quick wrap-up. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel so that you get notified about our latest videos. If you want to know more about our services, please head to our website at assurex.co. Thank you very much once again. Take care and stay safe.